Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at Prisma Audio's Azul. So you may not have heard of Prisma Audio. It is a brand new company and Azul is their first product. And as you can see from the box, it is designed and hand built in Melbourne, Australia. In the box, and this is actually nicer packaging than I normally deal with, so I usually don't go over the packaging or open box, but um, this one does have the monitors, a serial number card, a nice SPC cable, and a leather case, and a couple protective pouches, which is actually quite nice. So comes with a box of Asla sudden ear fits, super nice because I use these anyway. This is the metal serial number card. And if you look closely, you can see that mine is number 19. So as I said, very young company, first product, I have number 19. So thank you for that. And uh, so this is the faux leather case. It says Prisma Audio inside. You've got a nice twisted SPC cable, quite nice. And there's a protective pouch underneath that, but I was sort of happy with these protective pouches. I've never seen an IM specific protective pouch, so that was pretty cool. I seem to be more excited about it than Josh was. He's like, eh, whatever, but I think it's cool. So this is Prisma Audio's Azul. And on the outside, it's this beautiful blue Azul. It is a metal faceplate with a vent hole, a recessed two pin. And uh, in the back, you could almost make out there's two BAs in there with a couple tubes running down into the nozzle. And if you look really closely, you can see where those end up barely. So very cool. So the shell is actually solid 3D printed. I thought it was resin filled, but nope, he actually uh, had these 3D printed, and I assume that the metal faceplate is CNC milled as well, but I could be wrong about that. So, hand assembled by Josh, so super cool. Um, support your makers. So let's kind of get into it, and I will say, so as I said, first project by Prisma Audio. Please support them if you're financially in a position to do so. Do look into purchasing this and supporting them. So what does it sound like generally? It's a neutral tune similar to the ER4, but um, I think he tried to address a couple things that he didn't like about the ER, the etymotic, etymotic ER4. So a, a gentler, gentler rise into the upper mids and more treble extension. And I think those were two design goals that he accomplished. And I think, you know, those, those were his, you know, at least a couple design goals that I've gathered from what he said. So it does have BA base, and it doesn't have that that dynamic driver tangibility. You know, it's not going to really rumble your ears, but don't mistake that for no base or bad base. It's got it actually has plenty of base when you EQ it a little bit. So, but we'll get to that in a minute. So tuned for lower volume, and for me it was very difficult because it really wants to be turned up. To higher volumes i mean that's just my personal opinion it sounds really good and you spend a whole lot of time doing this gentle rise into the upper mid so vocals sound really nice without getting shouty and i'm just not going to listen to it at lower volume so um, josh mentioned he is a lower volume listener and is tuned uh, towards that so if that's you then this one is uh, right up your alley i will say i listened to it at higher volumes and we made some adjustments for that so like I said, so sound at my volume preference, it's just not quite enough bass and too much treble. It's this weird effect where it does sound very good at his volume level, at lower volume levels. But when you turn it up, you sort of notice that there's some bass missing and the treble extension really extended and at kind of a higher level. So it sort of bothered me and it sort of rings my ears a bit. And uh, so a little bit too much there for me. But EQ... Um, that's pretty much the answer to those two problems. Really bring the bass up a little bit, bring the treble down a little bit, and uh, it pretty much it hits more in like the ER4 XR range when you bump the bass up a little bit. I don't have the ER4, the standard one, but the ER4 XR with a little bass boost, that's essentially the effect that you're going to get by bringing the bass up a little bit. It just makes it more present, a little deeper, a little more body, and it's pretty much where I needed it to be. So as I said, bass with EQ... Very much a compliment to the mids. It's, you know, almost seamless. It just kind of falls right into the mids. It's really nice because it's you essentially have a two BAs handling the whole range. So 
one BA is obviously handing the whole low end into the middle, and the other one takes over at some point. But, you know, there's just almost a seamless transition between the two. And with the EQ, you get some warmth and some body to the low end, which is what it needs. So, so I started this EQ path with Little Sadie's Crooked Still, because you listen to it and the vocals and the banjo and the violin all sound great because those are all sitting in the midsection, but there's a bass in that, and I think it's the standing bass, and it you're just missing the whole low end to it, and it kind of drove me crazy, and, and then you just EQ it just a tiny bit, bring up that level just enough to hear it, and it's like, oh, everything is good now, and uh, so that was really what provoked me to start messing with EQ on this set. Um, Beds Are Burning by Julia Stone. Um, listen to the contrast in her voice and that deep piano. It goes quite low, and it's it's one of those things where you don't trust BA bass or you think it's all bad, but when you hear something like that and to hear it go really low into that piano, um, quite nice. And plus, Beds Are Burning, that's Australia's most famous band right there, Midnight Oil. I had to throw one Australia joke in there. So, good song anyway. So the mids, smooth, clear, forward vocals, there's a real dynamic feel to the vocals. Um, it's, yeah, it's kind of strange. It's not, it's relaxed, but dynamic, which is a an odd combination, but that's the way it comes off. So, but it's very smooth from the lower all the way through kind of this lower treble as well. And um, so, and especially in the midsection, because the bass was a little low and the treble was a little high, at first, it's really hard to focus on the mids, but if you take care of those two edge cases, um, for me, that's what I would call it. There's two edge tweaks to bring the bass up a little bit and then triple down, and the mids really come into focus and shine. And um, what I will say is once they came into focus and I really started listening to it, I will say that's probably my area where I would say more than one, more than two BAs would have helped in this case. It's It sounds really good, but it it's hard to compete with five BAs or six BAs with resolution and some of those details. I think that's about where I sort of noticed the one one place I really noticed that, you know, I really wish there was just more of all of this because it sounds really good, but um, it should be more. So as far as realism in the mids, and that was another thing that I just couldn't wrap my head around. They sound detailed, they sound clear, but didn't quite trick my brain into thinking it was real. And I couldn't quite figure out what was really going on there. There's something missing. And uh, when you kind of go down the checklist of uh, hearing all the details, all the audio cues, there's this dynamic voice, but it just didn't bring me to that level. Maybe it's just simply the resolution didn't quite bring me to that level of realism, but it's, it's pretty close. You know, a song like Sam Smith's Too Good of Goodbyes, this new Live at Abbey Road version, his voice is just spot on. Even that lower part of his voice is spot on. And uh, yeah, I can't keep on, keep on harping on this bass part of it, but when you turn it up a little bit, it sounds really, really good. And uh, But his voice and those vocals, close and intimate, and then he starts snapping and those pop out a bit. And that's kind of your first, you know, your first indication that, yeah, this treble extension thing, it really pops out of place at, at higher levels because the snaps really pop out. And then if you go to, so this part at 20 seconds in, the cymbal hits, which is going to sound really good. And then the background singer comes in alongside of his voice, like shadowing his voice. And I never really noticed it all that much, but like pretty much at 20 seconds, she comes in next to his voice. And on this set, I heard more of a separation than I usually hear. Like I've almost never really, especially in that version of the song, I never really heard that 20 second version where it really popped out that there was two people singing, but it definitely popped out here. So again, there's just a lot of this nice details and micro deals. It's all there. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure what was failing me to kind of transition to this sounds really, really close to him being in the room, but something there. And again, with EQ, the drums have body and the cymbal sizzle and the staging really works on this particular song as well. I mean, probably because it's recorded live and it sounds great. So the treble, like I said, at higher volumes, it's a bit too much for me, um, but it does work at lower volumes. It's very extended and it rises above the mix at higher volumes for me. And it, that's, again, it's sort of in, in particular to people who are listening to this guy at higher volumes. It's, uh, 
it is extended, and you have to take that into account with um, how much treble you like and at what level you're listening to it. So, so the song that really provoked me on the on the higher end side to drop it lower was "Sound of Music" by Porcupine Tree. And right in the beginning, those drums and the guitar um, they sound pretty good, but um, as the song hits about 44 seconds and that part rises even higher, it's just a bit too much on the Azul for me. Um, it, it starts to ring my ears a little bit. It's a little bit too much, and uh, you could either lower the volume or EQ it down a little bit, but um, just one of those weird things where I just kind of kept on playing with the, the treble to get it so so the snares and the cymbals and those bells, which tend to rise out of place, those higher frequency instruments, just rise a little bit too much on the Azul, but knock them back down in place, and then everything sounds great. And plus... Um, there's a chance, um, especially at higher volumes for sibilance on this, because of that treble is at a higher level and quite extended. I, there's a little bit there, especially at higher volumes. So bring it down a little bit, and uh, you'll kind of cut that chance of that happening as well. But you know, it's sort of an odd choice, a set that's a little light on bass to say it's it does really well with vocal trance EDM, but it really does. And a lot of that is this thing soars really high when you hear those you know, high-end synths, you know, really soaring and strings. It's really, really nice. And I did find myself listening to a lot of trance EDM on this, even though on paper I probably wouldn't say it was good for EDM. It, it actually is. And you just have to find stuff that works for your preferred bass level. And, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it works pretty good for that as well. So the staging is sort of a weird thing. I know there's other reviews and the staging. A lot of people are saying it's it's in your head, and that's the big reason why um, this guy is sitting here. So this is the UMB1S. It is a Class A headphone amp. And for me, this typically widens and deepens soundstage for me. It also sweetens up the midsection for me. So I tend to not use it in reviews a ton because it, it alters the sound enough that it's not quite what you're going to get when you plug the Azul into your phone, but it works so well with the Azul that I that was the only way I was using it was because it sounds really good. And most noticeable is the staging part where it really moves it from an in your head experience to you know a bigger open the vocals are much higher. There is instruments at your ears, but then there's instruments above your ears. And it, it is very much a big a big sound stage when you know you have a different amp or a better amp you know i think there is a bit of source selection to the azul to make it sound as good as it should be and uh so but you're gonna read other reviews they're gonna say it's an in-head experience and i'll say yeah that is that is true but i would definitely run across your sources and see if you can get a better experience out of it because it will do some really nice staging um, it just takes a matter of finding the right pairing with it. So so that is about it for the Prism Audio Azul. So again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you next time.